Hello, everybody. This is the Bougie and Broke Podcast. I'm Brandy. And I'm Stephanie, and this is episode number three. I'm so excited. New Year's is just a couple days away, and... Did you have a good Christmas? How was your Christmas? It was really good. Um, Santa came, brought all the presents. It was really awesome. How was yours? Oh, mine was great. Um, I'm actually still in Arizona. And let me set the scene for you right now. My house is full of people. And I decided that the best place to record right now so that it didn't pick up anybody's voices was outside by the pool. And it's like 60 degrees. So that's where I'm recording today. It's about 30 degrees in Denver right now. So I'm very jealous. Yeah, I'm like in yoga pants and a sweatshirt, and I'm going to be honest, I'm getting a little warm. (laughs) But holidays were great. I'm excited for the new year. Uh, 2018, not necessarily my favorite year, but we'll get into that in a second. We do need to address something first. Yes, we do. This is very tragic. We have been begging you guys to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. And we've been getting some ratings on all of these platforms. Brandy, would you like to discuss the one rating we got on Apple? Yes. So this is really hurting us because we had a one-star review. Um, and out of the nine reviews we have, that still puts us at a 4.5 average. So That's not okay. Whoever did this, know I'm coming for you. This is just rude. I don't like to give attention to the haters, but I'm going to give attention to this hater. Take your one star back. Seriously. <laughs> what can we do to, to change your mind? <laughs> yeah, at least give us a little constructive criticism or something. Seriously. Whatever. Bye. No more attention to that person. But I think I'm so glad that 2018 is over. It's been a rough year, but the best thing to come out of this year was definitely this podcast. For sure. That was actually one of my resolutions in 2018 was that I wanted to start a podcast and it may have debuted on December 14th, but we got it in in 2018. We did it. It's been a long time coming. And guys, if you think you could start a podcast, it's not as easy as you think it is. Especially if you're doing it with somebody that lives so far away. Do you have any New Year's Eve plans this year? I, I think I know one thing you have planned, but... Yeah, if you don't know one thing that I have planned, then you don't know me. I have to work, actually, from 12 to 6 on the Mix in Chicago. So if you're, you know, in Chicago or have the Mix app on your phone, go ahead and tune in. I'll be keeping you company from 12 to 6. And then after that, I don't have anything planned yet. I'm old, so I don't make plans that far in advance. And I will say, though that Taylor Swift is releasing her Reputation Tour on Netflix on New Year's Eve, so you better believe I'm watching that. And for the sake of Stephanie, I will also be watching it. I did ask Brandy (laughs) to watch it for me as my Christmas present. I'm like, you're broke. This is free. You need to watch it. (laughs) (laughs) That's something I could could do. But it's also going to be off my parents' Netflix account, so... (laughs) I wouldn't expect anything less, but I did see that tour four times in real life, and you know I'm going to watch it at least two times on New Year's Eve. I don't have any plans besides watching this Taylor Swift thing. I think there's going to be a couple of us in my apartment complex, and we're just going to all hang out and drink in the clubhouse, and there's a fire pit. We have like a really nice clubhouse, so I think that's what we're going to do, but nothing real special. I feel like New Year's Eve is such an amateur night. Like if you go to the bars and stuff, who wants to go spend all that money, pay for surge pricing on Uber? Definitely not I. Yeah. Everywhere in Denver, it's like you have to pay for a party to get into or like a huge cover for like even the shittiest bars. The last couple times, a couple years, I went to STK. I think I got kicked out. I'm really not sure. <laughs> it was all you could drink. So what do you expect? You probably got kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> um. Then the year before that, I went to this place called Devonte. If you're a Denver local, you know what that is. I'm not um, a Denver local and I know what that is. Okay. Well, we went to Avanti. Also, all you can drink, mistakes. <laughs> My friend, my friend Kara lost her keys and her phone and her wallet, and I had already gone home then, and I felt so terrible. Oh, no, she also lost my keys. Then how did you get inside? I was staying with a friend. <laughs> I will not ask for any more details. <laughs> 
Okay, so I look back at 2018 and I think that it was probably one of my least favorite years to date. I need to know one to three words that describe 2018 for you. I feel like you're my therapist right now. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm kind of expensive, so. Um, I think I would say grief, regrowth, and a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a lot. <laughs> it was just a lot. <laughs> I think that if I had to use one word to describe 2018, it would be just rough. Like that, nothing else could describe it other than rough. But I'm feeling way more optimistic now. Looking forward to 2019. See you never 2018. And I want to know like what your resolutions are going into the new year. Do you have any? Do you believe in resolutions? I am not a resolution kind of person. But for the sake of the pod, I think my resolution this year is slowing down. I work way too much. I'm always grinding. Um, I was looking at MBA programs um, (laughs) earlier, and I was like, how do I have time to get an MBA? Like, I don't have the money, one. Two, I don't have the time. So... Well, I hope that you're not going to slow down too much because this podcast is going to blow up and we're going to be super busy. So just take that into consideration. I I guess I should say keep time for myself. Okay, I like that better. (laughs) I don't necessarily believe in resolutions either, but if I have to pick one, I think it's going to be to start being on time a little bit more than I have been in the past. <laughs> I am I am late all of the time. The, my family, my friends, significant others in the past have just straight up called it Stephanie time. They'll tell me that we need to be somewhere at 6.30 and we really have to be somewhere at 7 and I'll be there on time because I have that half an hour bumper. So I'm going to try to work on that a little bit in 2019. <laughs> and... Um, You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cut out this audio clip and send it to your boss so he could hold you accountable. Oh my God. (laughs) Please don't. (laughs) Stephanie, how were you a bougie bitch this week? I don't really feel like I've been that bougie this week. I was at home with my parents um, and Christmas stuff, so I really wasn't doing too much. But I will say that my flight home from Phoenix, I paid for that. Obviously, I flew Southwest because we know I love Southwest. And my flight was probably, I think it was like $156 when I booked it, that one-way flight. And I Southwest does this thing where if you log on and you find the flight at a cheaper price, you can get a refund or get a credit or something like that. If you rebook it, that's why I love Southwest. You can change your flight. You can rebook. Like it's just so flexible and I love it. So I was on the other day. I was trying to see if I could leave a little bit earlier for Christmas because I have to work the next day. Long story. But anyway, I was trying to check my flight and I'm scrolling down and it's like, if you rebook the flight that I do have, well, it's $86 cheaper. What? And I was like, <laughs> Yes. So I rebooked my flight. It was $65 one way. So now I have an $86 Southwest credit. Hey. Nice. So not necessarily super bougie, but uh, you know what I'm going to do with that $86. I'm going to come to Denver to see you. Yeah, I know. Because it's only $86 supply here. (laughs) And we could just be bougie there. So it's resulting in a bougie experience for me. Great. But how are you broke? All right. This is, this is a bad one. So I have a health insurance deductible of $2,700 a year. I have gone to a lot of therapy in 2018. I did say 2018 was rough, so you can imagine. I realized last week that I was $90 away from hitting my deductible. So I scheduled a therapy session. And I only paid $90 for it. So I hit my deductible and I'm sitting there and I'm talking to my therapist and I'm like, Hey, uh, any chance you have anything between the 28th and the 31st? And she's like, I can like squeeze you in on Thursday morning at (laughs) 11 o'clock. Does that work for you? I'm like, I will be there. And the reason I'm going is because it's free for once. Oh my gosh. (laughs) That's awesome. Right? Because once 2019 starts, my deductible restarts and I'll be back to paying $127 a session. 
Yeah, that's insane. Well, I'm glad that you're getting your mental health on. First of all, I actually have, uh, right after the recording, I have a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Mental health is super important. And if you're not in therapy, you're not doing it right. Really? I guess that's one of my biggest things, or I guess a resolution you could say, going back to resolutions, is advocating more for mental health and like being real about about it with other people. I just think it's so crazy that it is so expensive. Like I cannot believe my insurance does not cover more for therapy. Like I'm trying to do something good here and not be an unproductive member of society. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Tell me how you have been bougie this past week. So just last night I went to dinner with one of my friends and every time we go to dinner, I know we're going somewhere really good and really fancy. Um, and they always pay. And last night, we went to uh, Matuhishu, which is uh, like a Nobu restaurant. Mm. And so good. If you like Google Matuhishu Denver, it says swanky upscale hangout. <laughs> okay, I don't, I don't know what says bougie more than that. I just order everything, so I had spicy tuna, I had Wagyu beef, uh, king crab, we also had some lobster, like, a couple glasses of wine, and I don't know. It's 10.30 in the morning, and I am hungry for crab and lobster now. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) It's so, it was so good. Um, so that was just me being bougie. What was the bill? Um, it was probably around $350. Whoa, and you didn't pay for it? No. No. That's even better. (laughs) It pays to have wealthy friends, I guess. I'm not sure. (laughs) All right. So you didn't pay for that, but we know you're still broke. So tell me (laughs) what you did to be broke this week. So I didn't go to the grocery store or get my groceries delivered this week because I was back for Christmas and, you know, I was just going to throw away the food anyway. So I've just been like kind of eating out and grabbing stuff where I could. But I was like, wow, I spent a lot of money on like quick service restaurants this week, like Chipotle and there's a pizza place and I've just eaten like shit this entire week and spent a lot of money on it. So for lunch, I had a Starbucks reward and went and used it to get a free PB&J box. So That's really the dream. So I had lunch for free. You know what I'm upset about, about your Starbucks in Denver? They have no grilled cheese. They have no grilled cheese. Yep. That, you yeah. know me, you know me too well. That's one of my favorite fat girl treats from, <laughs> from Starbucks. I love going and getting a grilled cheese every now and again. And I'm sorry, you can't have one. <laughs> I am also sorry. I didn't even get one when I was visiting you in Chicago. That's messed up. I did go to Starbucks about 10 times though. You went to the Starbucks reserve. So bougie. <laughs> So if you Google news millennials, all of these news articles come up and we thought it would be interesting for each of us to pick a news article about millennials and where their money's going and talk about it because sometimes we agree on stuff, sometimes we don't. And I think they're pretty interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's very relevant and on brand for us. Totally on brand. I saw one the other day. It was like millennials are killing canned tuna or something because we like instant gratification and like the tuna in the pouches. What? What? (laughs) Yeah. Let's just blame millennials for everything. So my article is how millennials are making money and saving for a rainy day. Fact, we're not. (laughs) (laughs) I know all the ways how to. It's just not set in place. Right. The execution, a little bit off. So this article, it's from the Frisky, and it says it's definitely time for millennials to consider not only the ways to make money, but also save it. So then they give you four ways that millennials are trying to save money. Now, the first one is called the gig economy, and it means that more working professionals are opting for outside the box employment, including freelancing, contracting, and entrepreneurship. So you you are a contractor basically this entire year, weren't you? Um, yeah. So I had a job at the beginning of the year, <laughs> got fired. You and didn't get fired. You got ghosted. My boss ghosted me and I wish that was exaggerated. 
And then I was a contractor for the rest of the nine months and I just got hired on full time. So, so yeah, like this is a millennial thing and it says that um, a gig economy is a great place for millennials to earn money without having to commit to a single employer, which just kind of emphasizes what dating is all about too with millennials not committing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there is some shade thrown there. I mean, maybe just a little. Uh, The second one is that millennials are encouraged to open IRAs to help them save for retirement. Uh, I have a 401k. I put money in it and I was going to look up to see how much I have in it, but I didn't do that yet. But I know that there's like a pretty decent amount for my age, I think. I'm not sure. I don't I don't know what to compare it to, but I know that I put money in my 401k. So at least I've got that going. Do you have a 401k or an IRA? I have a 401k and I work at a huge retirement company, so I know a lot about this, but like Stephanie said, the execution is pretty poor. But if I could give any financial advice, match whatever your employer contributes. So if they're going to match 3%, put in 3%, like then you're getting 6%. Why wouldn't you? I know this sounds like a dumb, obvious question, like, why wouldn't you? But people don't. I wish I knew, like, a statistic on how many people don't match. That's really crazy. I can't imagine, like, not at least matching so that you were getting, you know, double your money. Exactly. The thing on this article, after talking about IRAs, it says, the best thing any millennial can do is speak with a trained financial advisor to help steer you in the right direction for your financial future. (laughs) That's me. We are are not that. So do not take any advice from us. We're just reading the article to you. So the next one, this is number three, a side hustle. It says another solution for millennials to earn a little extra money is the side hustle. Even if you're working a full-time job, you can use some of your spare time to make a little extra and millennials are monetizing their hobbies and that helps them save. So this podcast, is this a side hustle? It's going to be when we're raking in the dough. (laughs) Which we've made zero dollars on this. We're actually probably in the hole after um, the travel that we've done, the website, the Instagram ads. (laughs) The emails, like, we have, like, so much going on. My dad, I told my dad he can contribute to the podcast. There's a link in the bio. There's a link in the show notes. Didn't your mom say she'd give us 99 cents? Yes. And I was like, thanks, Sherry. We actually really do need it. We will take it. I would consider, I think my life, I have a side hustle, so I have a real full-time job, and then I have a part-time job on top of that. Even though it's like my fun job and it's a radio station, it's technically like a side hustle, and I've had two jobs my entire life, so I guess I've always had a side hustle. This is my side side hustle. I know. I'm always side hustling as well. I have a day job, and then I also just picked up a new side hustle, and then the podcast, so side side hustle as well. Always grinding. Always. The final one on this list is investments. It says there's a lot of options today for anyone who wants to get into the stock market, even though from what I've heard this past week, the stock market has not been doing so well. But they say that apps like Robinhood or Acorn will help you manage your money and trading online. Do you use either of those apps? I don't, but I use another app. It's called Money Lion. And right now, let me pull up what is in my investments. I have like $400 in investments. We're down about 15%. So I think I'm losing like $23. My money's not vested very aggressively. No, but you told me about the Money Line app and I did it. And it's not only great to invest your money, but it's great because it also helps raise your credit score. Yes. So you could take out like a $500 personal loan and pay it back over time. So each payment is going to FICO or any like credit reporting. I don't really know how (laughs) that works, but um, my credit has been raised like 45 points in the last like year, maybe. My credit score wasn't bad to start out with, but I mean, I'll take it boosting it up. Oh yeah. But if you are looking for an app like that, that is good for investments just to get your feet wet, Moneyline is a good one. We've both used it and I'm not upset about it. Yeah, we'll we'll post the referral link. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll get money. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> One way to support the podcast. Yeah, we'll take anything we can get. That wraps up my article, so hopefully that gives you some tips on how you can save money in 2019. That's that should be our resolution, Brandy. Saving, Saving some money. Saving money. I'm starting off 2019 with going on a trip to Colombia, so already starting off bad saving money. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, you know, YOLO. I picked this article from Elite Daily, very credible news source. Totally. <laughs> 65 weird things on Amazon that are wildly popular with millennials. So I picked, uh, we don't have time to go through all 65, obviously. So I picked my top 10. I picked these because they're the most relatable or they're things that I added to my cart immediately. <laughs> I was literally just going to say, is this going to be me just sitting here putting shit in my Amazon cart while you're talking? <laughs> Yes, probably. All right, let's go. What's number one? The first one is an oil diffuser. Yes. I have two. Already going to get a third because this one looks really cool. Is it like light up or what's the situation it's on it? ultra quiet and um, lights up in 24 different colors. $46 on Amazon. Next up, uh, a tool that makes preparing avocados easy. So it has like a pitter, a cutter, and a slicer all in one. Could this be any more millennial? I love avocados too, so add to cart. Make that avocado toast, girl. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Next up, uh, also a very millennial bougie, um, are these 24 karat gold eye patches. And they're supposed to help with like irritation and collagen. So like little gold eye masks basically so those would be great for after we get done crying at therapy <laughs> seriously <laughs> add to cart <laughs> next up is a pop socket i feel like literally i don't know how people even functioned before pop sockets were invented i don't have one i don't have one on my phone either but i used to and i had to take it off because i was relying on it so much well, mine, I just can't ever find one that matches the case I have on my phone, and I'm a little OCD about that matching, so that's why I don't have one. <laughs> well, I don't even have a case on my phone, so... You're living you're living on the edge. I am. All right, next up, very millennial, very environmental, reusable drinking straws. Are they paper? No. Paper is not reusable. <laughs> I'm not the... <laughs> Can't. I'm not the uh, brightest obviously. crayon in the box. I went to Arizona State. What do you expect from me? Reusable straws. I'm all about the idea, but as long as they're not paper straws, but I still need a straw. I feel like if I had one, I would forget it. I feel like I would love the idea. I really do like the idea. If you've seen the video of them pulling the plastic straw out of the turtle, sea turtle's nose, have you seen that one? Yes, I have. I heard it's like it doesn't happen that often, though. I'm sure it doesn't happen that often, but that video is gross, and it made me not want to use plastic straws again. But I feel like if I had a reusable one, I wouldn't actually like remember to take it with me. No, and then you would just throw it in your purse all dirty and full of soda or your vodka soda or your iced tea, your coffee. No, that's, that's gross. There's got to be a better way. We'll come up with it, and then that's how we'll make money to support the podcast. Yeah, I have a $1,500 purse. I'm not going to put a <laughs> gross reusable straw in it. <laughs> All right, what's next on your list? It is a Himalayan salt lamp. I feel like these are very voodoo-y, like, in-your-head kind of thing. It's supposed to help you sleep better and increase oxygen flow. I'm not sure if they work, but... Super trendy, and it gives off a, like, very nice glow. So, who knows? Who Might knows? be worth trying. This next one is literally in my cart purchased. It is a vegetable ricer. So I don't eat a lot of like carbs, so I love cauliflower rice, and I'm about to rice every vegetable ever. <laughs> can you rice every vegetable? Um, yeah, you could rice carrots, zucchini, cauliflower. Brandy went to culinary school, and I make salad to eat for myself. <laughs> so that's that's where we're different. <laughs> Next up uh, is Exploding Kittens. If you haven't played this game, it's there's a reason why it's on the list. I've never even heard of it. Maybe I'll send it to you. What is it? Like, is it a card game? Is it? Yeah, it's a card game. It's really hard to explain. You have to, like, kind of get into it, but kind of like a mix between, like, life and, like, also, what's the Cards Against Humanity? So. Oh. Yes. Is and this then, a family game? Can I play this with my family or no? <laughs> me and my family play it together, so. All right. I'll have to put that on my list. There's a clean, like, there's a regular version, and then there's, like, the adult version. I wouldn't recommend playing adult version with your family. <laughs> 
All right. What's up next? Um, a laundry basket that is collapsible. I don't know. I think this is just so millennial because we live in these itty bitty apartments and I have my laundry basket takes up almost my entire closet. I was going to say, how much is this? Cause I'm actually getting on Amazon to order this right now so that I can get rid of my other ones because you are so right. They take up so much freaking space. Yes. $24. So oh, worth that's it. That's so worth it. In the last one, I'm not a fan of this because I think it's tacky and disgusting, but I think it's very on-brand millennial. Out of all these things, I feel like this is what people are doing the most. It's a tote bag that can hold two bottles of wine in it, and it, like, dispenses. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Is it's, it a cute bag? <laughs> it's okay. It's called Porto Vino Wine Tote. I feel like this would be great for some, like, college girl to take to a party or... Oh, my God, absolutely. Something weird, like, to, like, a tailgate, maybe sneak it into, like, a hockey or baseball or whatever game that you're going to. I was just going to say, this would be perfect for, like, a concert or a baseball game. (laughs) (laughs) Just over here drinking out of my purse. Yeah, uh, it's pretty funny. Okay, Stephanie, it's that time where I log in. I don't in. like this time. I don't like it. <laughs> I log into your Bank of America app to see what your last five purchases were. First up on the list, presidential parking, $16. It's a lot. It's prudential um, parking, but close enough. Um, that's the same, really the same shit. It is parking at the radio station. Sixteen. I pay $16 every time I go to work. Isn't that lovely? Ugh, no. And then we have just recently Nail Palace for $35. Okay, that was a pedicure. And you'll probably see another charge for nails somewhere close to that, right? Yes. I Like, just two down. <laughs> Literally two <laughs> transactions ago. $73 for couture nails. Okay, so I went in Chicago to get my nails done before I came to Phoenix for Christmas. And I got a Manny Petty and the Manny, absolutely great. I'll go back to this place for a Manny. The Petty though was $35 and they didn't have a massage chair. What? Yeah, I know. I was like, what is this? And so then they charged me for it and they were like 70 bucks. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me right now. So I got some nail polish that had like glitter in it. Cause I was like, new year, like let's put a little glitter on my toes. It's already chipped off and so that's yeah so that's what the second nail place was I'm in Phoenix and we me and my mom went to go get our nails done I'm like I gotta get another pedicure because this looks disgusting so I paid another $35 for a pedicure but this one lasted like an hour it was the best massage I've ever had there were hot stones there was a sea salt thing and a massage chair so this one was exponentially better (laughs) I would have went back to the original place and made them redo my toast. So you're a better person than I am. Well, it was worth it because that massage was so good at this last pedicure. Okay. (laughs) Also, um, we have an Amazon charge for $10.97. What did you buy on Amazon? Well, remember when we said my dad was going to buy Jell-O shot syringes for Christmas? Yes. He dropped the ball. (gasps) Yeah, he dropped the ball. So when I got home to Phoenix, I was like where's the jello shots and he's like i didn't order them i thought that you were going to or i thought that taylor my sister was going to so i had to order them and have them primed to be delivered the sunday before christmas so that we could have <laughs> walgreens for 1021 all right so that new piercing i got they told me not to use antibacterial soap or anything to clean it they told me to get a saline spray it's like a wound spray So that's what that is. And it comes out so fast. Like I have to do it in the shower, spray my ear with it because it is so fast and like goes all (laughs) over my body. It is crazy. But that's what that 1021 was for. Saline solution. All right. From my bougie new piercing. (laughs) All right. Time for me to look into your Wells Fargo. I feel like you're going to have some good ones this week. I don't know why. It's just a feeling I'm having. (sighs) All right. Well, This first one is already making me excited. Public data check for $32.99. Are you stalking somebody? I'm stalking literally everybody. (laughs) Can I send you a list of names? Yeah. Um, So a couple, like, I think it was like a 
a week ago, I was looking up some people, and my friend was also looking up some people, and they this is how they get you, seven-day free trial, but after the seven days, you forget to cancel. I forgot to cancel, so I just accepted the charge for $32 and literally looked up everybody in my phone. Didn't you look me up? Yeah, Stephanie has a lot of parking tickets, a lot of speeding tickets. Um, What's new? We're not surprised. (laughs) All right, second thing on the list. I've got $83.90 for the 303 Beauty Bar in Denver. So that's where I get my hair done. I just got a haircut. You love that place. I love it so much. They posted a cute boomerang of me the other day. (sighs) Why didn't I see it? I'll have to go look. Okay, yes. And so I just got a haircut. It wasn't $83. I also got some product. And I had a $15 off coupon because I frequent there so much. It was like a punch card. The product I normally get is like $35 or something. So I was like, hey. I think I pay like 65 or 70 for a haircut. So I wasn't even surprised at $83. I was like, oh, she just added tip or something. Yeah, so <laughs> tip plus product plus haircut. It's very reasonable. $55. I, yeah, that's not bad. I paid worse. You've paid worse and had worse. We're going to do a whole hair episode one time and just get ready for it. This is a teaser into the future. You are going to love the hair episode we do. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you are. Miller Pro Image, $23. So uh, I get tons of like holiday cards with people and their significant others and their dogs and their babies. So every year I send out a New Year Merry Christmas Happy Holidays card of just myself. So those are my... (laughs) Those are my holiday cards that everybody got. Are you drinking wine in them? No, I'm not. I'm I'm looking like they're very they're very like professional and like <laughs> just me. Like a just a beautiful picture of me. I checked my mail before I left and I didn't have one, so hopefully I have one in my house when I get You'll home. You'll have it. Perfect. All right. Snappy nail spa, fifty seven dollars. Cheaper than my seventy and thirty five dollar charges. So tell me about it. Yep, just the regular uh jail manicure and regular pedicure. The pedicure wasn't anything to write home about, but needed. I always have to have my nails and toes matching, so I had I had to get a pedicure. <laughs> Pepsi Center, nineteen fifty. This is the last one. I think I went to either a Nuggets or an Avalanche game. I've been to the Pepsi Center quite a lot this last couple of weeks. So don't remember if it, which team it was for. Probably a couple beers, and I probably drank both of them by myself. No judgment. <laughs> The intro outro music, the night game, the song is Bad Girls Don't Cry. We have permission from them. We told them we would talk about the song every single week, even though they didn't care. Uh, But we're doing it. We like to keep our word. Yes, please rate and review. Subscribe to our podcast wherever you find them. And follow us on all social channels at Bougie and Broke Podcasts. Thank you guys so much for listening. Happy New Year. We hope 2019 is good to you. Yes. Bye, guys. Bye.